Terry Owen, and this is my awesome husband, Pastor Kurt Owen. And so you've probably seen some really fun videos and some serious ones, but we've been coming to you and talking to you about living in certain times because Amen. we uh, live in a time right now. And if you're listening and watching to this uh, in the future, right now we are in um, 2020 in the spring and we have been experiencing quarantine. Now, no matter been... when you're listening, the principles we're teaching, no matter what you're facing, remain the same. But go ahead. So right now there's COVID-19 known as the coronavirus uh, that's been a pandemic around the world. And we have been told things like, oh, you're living in uncertain times. You're going to have a new normal. And so we're coming to you to address this because it's a grievous term when a Christian says or a believer says that we are living, living in, in uncertain, uncertain times. times. Because in Deuteronomy, that's under the curse of the law. It says that your life shall be hanging doubt before you and you shall have no assurance of life. And so when Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, he redeemed us from uncertain times. And so Pastor Kurt's been leading us through the word and we've been seeing um, in a variety of different places how God is predictable. God is certain. And when the word of God is your sure foundation, you're not standing on quicksand. You're standing on the solid rock, the cornerstone of your faith. And so we were in Daniel chapter three and we've talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And during that time, King Nebuchadnezzar had set up a golden image and he had commanded that everybody bow down and worship this image at the sound of the music. And and when the music happened, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow their knee to this golden image. And it wasn't even a god. You know, I, right. we, we uh, had a service where we were talking about that at a church service that it, it, it's not a god. It was just, hey, man-made uh, situation. I want to make this gold thing. I want, I'm going to play all this horrible music. And when you hear the horrible music, turn to this gold thing I made. And, and bow down. It. Yeah. And so what we saw was that um, the Chaldeans were jealous of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they weren't kids. It was an interesting point that you pointed out. There are certain images that we have in our mind that we, as we've learned Bible uh, scriptures, usually when we're learning them as children, mm -hmm. when they get watered down, sometimes they get watered down inaccurately. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that you had pointed out was that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't yet just young kids. They were actually governors. They were actually men of stature um, and and prominence in the in the land. And you know, I didn't I didn't have very much um, religious upbringing and stuff. Even though my grandmother and my mom were Christians, they they weren't very religious. But I still remember when I first heard this story. Then they're telling me they were the three Hebrew children, and I had in my mind. Right. They, they took right. these kids and we're going to burn them up. Right. And, and, there so, was a, and there was another interesting thing we, we had a conversation of later was that in my mind, a furnace was something that they got thrown into, like right. a pit. Mm -hmm. And you pointed like out to me, a, a furnace is actually, you know, it's it's like as if it were built into the wall, like an right. oven. Right. And so it's a matter of perspective that when we're taught things, it doesn't mean that we're taught accurately. Because there's a mouth. There's right. like an opening. You can look them up. They're, they they would have either ones inside buildings or they'd have uh, these really, really large ones right. that uh, that were self-standing structures that, that you would throw them in. Right. And so there was this mouth, but they, I mean, they were really big on the inside. Right. And so, so as we're going through the scripture, it's important for us to look at the scripture and see what the truth is, not what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if what we've been taught was wrong, then we need to to look Go at the word the and say, this is the truth. And so this is what G James right. refers to as receiving with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. And so just to be clear, it's not meekness when you hear the word and you disagree with it. Right. It is not meekness when you hear the word or see it in the word and you say, yes, but I believe it this way. Now that that's actually pride. Mm -hmm. Or you say, well, I was taught this way. So what? Right. Even if we teach you something that is contrary to the written word, you go with the written right. word because people you have, can make mistakes. Yeah, you have to be meek enough to say I'm wrong. You know. Now yeah. we we kind of went through this whole story, but there. And going back over this, and by the way, if you will shoot us an email uh, to connect at kurtowen.com, we have some. Um, Something free for you. These are our notes actually on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay. And um, 
So these are absolutely free. Just shoot us an email and uh, we'll make sure that you get them. We'll mail them to you or, uh, or email, or email them. I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but that's yours absolutely free. But you have to contact us and ask us for it. L let's talk about this as a, you've, you've really done a good job laying it out. But let's talk about this really more um, instead of each individual thing that happened. Mm -hmm. um, and again, remember, he creates this gold thing. Everybody's got to worship it. Uh, Shadrach, Mac, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, no, we're not doing this. And that's when the Chaldeans uh, bring him forward. The king confronts them personally and says, uh, if you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you into the furnace. The, at that point, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not in any way uncertain of the Lord, mm -hmm. say, uh, if you throw us into the furnace, our God is able and will deliver us. If not, not if God doesn't deliver us, but if you don't throw us in the furnace, right. therefore you need to know we don't, we're not going to serve your gods. One right. thing, you know, we, we brought this out. Um, by the way, if you'd like a link to that service we did where we talked about this, shoot us an email at connect at .com and we'll send it to you free. One of the things I do think this, this is interesting we got to go back to is um, what they said in verse 17. If that is the case, again, it's um, Daniel 3, 17. If you throw us into the furnace. If you throw us into the furnace. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. I, I, let me just stop there. And I didn't talk about this last night. Are they running from the problem? Not at all. Are they t putting their head and saying they actually specifically address exactly what he said? Mm -hmm. Our God is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery, fiery furnace. furnace. They're not backing right. off. They're not backing down. Right. They, they know exactly what they're facing. Right. So, so when we look at that and we apply this to our own life, mm -hmm. this is the confidence that we have that if we've been told by a doctor that we have a diagnosis, if we've been told that there's uh, the stock market's crashing and everything that you've ever invested is gone, right. no matter what is the fiery furnace that you're facing, right. you can live a lifestyle so entrenched in trusting God that your response to that is, my God is able to deliver me and, and he will deliver me. With full knowledge of the facts. Right. Like if the doctor says uh, you have, what's, what's the cancer that's like really bad? Lymphoma? Is it lymphoma? What's the one that like you're going to die? Um, sort of thing. A Fate, lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I will never have to be familiar with cancer, so there's no sense in me getting majoring on it. It's stupid to go on Med WebMD and start diagnosing yourself because you're feeding on. You're not feeding on the Lord anymore. You're feeding on the problem. People say, "Well, you got to face it." Yeah, I'll face it. You, you've told me I have. What, what's the one before you? That phase four, uh, stage four. Stage four. Stage four. You've got stage four. What lymphoma? Okay, great. I hear what you're saying. You're saying that currently in my body is stage four lymphoma cancer. But doctor, I want to tell you that my God, whom I serve, is able and will deliver me from st stage four lymphoma cancer. Right. You, you don't run from it. Right. You don't, don't, you know, right. let's not talk about right. it. Let's not we're use not the C word. Yeah, we're not an ostrich. You, you, when people start talking about your problem, you know, a lot of times Christians say, and I, I hear this all the time because, and they call it faith, but it's fear. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I can say it. And I can, it's just like Jesus when Lazarus died. I can say it. He's dead. I didn't want to say it. That wasn't my preference, but I can say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's dead. But let me tell you, he ain't staying dead. Right. So yes, you are a burning, fiery furnace. I'm looking directly at you, directly at my problem. I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not even trying to diminish it. I'm just telling you as big as you think you are, my God is bigger and my God is willing and my God will help me. Amen. And that goes back to where we see in Ephesians that it is the resurrection power that, that is exerted over believers. Right. It's Abounding exerted towards us. It, it, towards us, in us, for us. And so, so when we apply the scripture, see that 
that's what we're talking about. We've done we've done some um, meditation uh, service uh, broadcasts where you guys are able to go back and see us meditate the Word of God. But this is what we're talking about: is when we practically apply what this word says, how does this apply to your life or what you're facing without sticking your head in the ground, without running from it, without saying, well, no, God can't do this. Can your God deliver you? Yeah. And and again, it is not faith to run from your problem. It is faith to diminish your problem in the light of God. Right. This is nothing. Right. You're burning. Yeah, it is a burning, fiery furnace. But and it it's is, big. And it's and big. And it's hot. And it's hot, but it is nothing so, compared to so, so your furnace is big. Your furnace is hot. Your furnace is real. But you magnify the Lord. And God is bigger and yeah. stronger and mightier and willing and loving. And will help me. Amen. He will help me. He will help me. So, yeah. And again, I think this is important in in life. Yes, right now we're dealing with COVID-19, coronavirus. Listen, there's a lot more stuff more deadlier than this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been to places where there's Ebola and stuff and where people bleed from their eyes and weird stuff like that. You need to be able to look at, you know, that is nasty. That is bad. That can kill you. But it can't kill me because the one on the inside of me, the one who swore love and help to me Mm -hmm. is for me. And that's part of becoming certain. When you're certain, you can look at your problem. You don't have to run from it. There's some more great stuff we've got. We're going to have to get out of this passage, but we're going to have to stop here. But you need to make up your mind. If you're not certain now, you're going to be. You're going to listen to these teachers over and over again. By the way, if you heard this and this helped you and this spoke to you, please like it. Please share it. Please tell people about it because we're trying to help as many people as we can. This is Kurt and Terry Owing reminding you that Jesus Jesus is risen and victory is assured. assured.